Welcome, I'm Dr. Paul, and we're having another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. Today I'm going to be talking about jaundice. So newborn jaundice is something that's universal. Basically every infant born has some degree of jaundice, and when you understand why, it makes a lot of sense. You know, when you're in your mother's womb, you are extracting entirely all your oxygen from the umbilical cord. Babies to do that need extra red blood cells, so they have what's called a very high hemoglobin or hematocrit, a large amount of circulating red blood cells to be able to hold on to enough oxygen until they're born and start breathing and using their lungs. Well, what happens right at birth, you get disconnected from your mother, from that umbilical cord, and you're You've got this sluggish, heavy blood with all these red blood cells, and that's not really optimal for a lot of reasons. So a lot of those red blood cells are programmed to break down, and in the process, they release bilirubin. Bilirubin is what makes all babies jaundice, a yellow color to the skin. Now, jaundice is universal, and so it's not something to be feared. However, if your jaundice is very, very high, and we usually, in, in, in this country here in Oregon, all babies born at major hospitals are having a bilirubin drawn, usually at 36 hours age. You can do it as early as 24 hours, and that can give you a pretty good idea of whether you're going to get into trouble with high bilirubins. The reason we worry about high bilirubins is that a very high bilirubin is bad for brain. When we see levels in the 20s and they stay there for days, if not weeks, very high risk for permanent brain damage, something called cornicterus. Now, thankfully, I've only seen this once when I was in training. I've only heard of one other case in, here in the Portland area that happened many, many years ago. The way we're able to avoid cornicterus is careful monitoring. Now, you as a parent, you don't need to panic or worry about jaundice. Just be sure you have your follow-up with your pediatrician because we know what to look for. Or your healthcare provider, if they are following and seeing jaundice and then checking a bilirubin, then you'll know. We can, we can determine whether or not your baby's at any risk at all. And most of the time, it's no risk whatsoever. So I, the purpose of this video is not in any way to scare you about jaundice, but merely to make you aware of it. So here's the real important information. What can you do about it? Wouldn't it be nice if we could avoid having the jaundice reach such a level that it's causing potential problems to your infant? Well, there is something you can do. The key way that jaundice, that bilirubin, is eliminated from the body is by adequate nutrition. We're talking volume. Remember, your newborn is drinking. That's it. Hopefully it's breastfeeding, or if it's not, for, for any reason you cannot breastfeed, you don't need to be alarmed about that. There are good formulas, and I've got other videos on formula that will be forthcoming. But it's the volume of breast milk or formula that will help the body to get rid of the bilirubin and therefore keep your baby safe from the potential damage of very high bilirubin levels. So it's all about feeding, basically. It's interesting, I have patients from all over the world and I had one of my Indian grandmas recently say, well, that's why we take our babies out in the sun. Very true, light, certain spectrums of light hitting the skin of your baby can reduce the bilirubin significantly. And in fact, if your child's bilirubin gets so high, maybe in the 17 to 20 range or higher, your pediatrician will likely prescribe a light therapy blanket. This can often be done at home. In some cases, it's done in the hospital where you can do more intensive therapy with a blanket below the child, lights above, and basically get that bilirubin down quicker. So that's the short version of what to do about jaundice, the yellow color your baby will get. It peaks around day three, four, five, which happens to correspond with when mom's milk starts coming in, right? So it's sort of a double whammy in that regard. Your baby's getting dehydrated, and so they're not sleeping or nursing as well. And then if their bilirubin is getting really high, that kind of makes babies sleepy as well. So you've got a double whammy. If you're nursing, your baby's just sort of giving up on you. You can't get them to nurse. They may need a little help in the area of fluids just to get them over the hump, especially if their bilirubin is very high. But 90 to 95, 99% of moms can breastfeed right on through and have this not be an issue where you even need to supplement. But don't be adverse to supplementing if your baby's getting into trouble with excessive weight loss beyond 10% weight loss and significant jaundice that could be putting your baby's brain in danger. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. I'm Dr. Paul.